Hello guys, Nigel here with you, Nigel's Modeling Bench, and here we have a kit review for you. Um, it's very, very late on Wednesday night, Thursday morning, and uh, I can't bloody sleep, so I thought I'd do a review. I got this delivered today. Um, I was looking the other day on Amazon for a 172nd scale Sea King, and I noticed there were three of these 148 scale Hasegawa kits for sale on Amazon at an unbelievably good price. So I bought one, Paul bought one, and Chris bought one. Paul being Plastic Monkey, Chris being Rally Car Miniatures, and it looks like I got mine first. So I'm going to do a review of this today. This kit came with a label on here with my name and address. It had a label here with some code. It had a label here with some more code, a label here, a label up there, and two labels on the ends. And it was delivered like that, and the box isn't even sellotaped down. The lid isn't even, the lid, sorry, isn't even sellotaped down. I could not believe my eyes. Um, so, uh, yeah, well done, Amazon. Thanks for that. That was brilliant. Paul received his later on, and it came boxed up and beautiful. As far as I know, Chris has yet, don't, hasn't have his. So this is a fairly old kit. Um, I believe it's from about 2004. About to be re-released. So those of you that have been looking for a Sea King in 148 scale, your prayers will soon be answered because this is just about to be re-released. It's on pre-order at Jadlam, for example, I know. Um, and I know that it, it's basically about to be, you know, put back on the market. So it's the SH3H Sea King from Hasegawa. It's a beautiful kit, 148 scale, big old bird in 148. So you can see on the side of the box here, you've just got SH3H Sea King. We've got some words down here about it in all the different languages. The part number is PT1, so that's easy to remember. End of the box is basically the same artwork you can see there. And then here we've got a picture of the built model in one of the available options. And then on here we've got some stickers from where it was come from. And there's more stickers they've added on the box actually, which I missed. Um, and we can see here it says 2004 Hasegawa. So I'm assuming it's 2004 original tooling. So inside the box we have our instructions, which we'll have a look at in a sec. We've got some clear parts here, which unbelievably are not all scratched and everything, but they're very nice indeed. Um, we've got some photo etching there, which is very nice. We have one bag here with all the sprues in, rattling around, knocking around on each other. Uh, so yeah, probably some damage in there. And then we have here, we have the lovely decal sheet, which is very, very nice indeed. And we've got all the different options on there. Nothing on here about cartograph or anything, so I'm assuming they're just Hasegawa decals. But um, as you can see, very, very nicely printed. Very, very good register. Lovely colours and everything. I won't be using these because um, I'm very lucky that a friend of the channel is going to be sending me the decals for, I believe it's called Hello 66. The original old 66 did Apollo 8. 10 11 and 12 um this one i want to do as apollo 13 and apparently it was called hello 66 or something and it had the alligator on the door but uh yeah i'm being sent those in the post so i'm really looking forward to getting those so i can do this as the apollo one when i get around to it so the instruction manual is book styled it's got 16 pages it's got some history about it on here all about the technical specification there and a lovely image of the built model there in another scheme different than that's that on the side of the box and then going into the instructions here we have the your typical sort of sprue call out we've got parts here not required one thing i am disappointed about the apollo um sea kings had a sort of step like a pressed metal step on the main door and it's not in there i was kind of hoping it was going to be in here as one of the unused parts but uh, it's not in here so anyway going forward here we've got the cockpit going together we've got our um all our controls and everything going in we've got some instruments there it's telling us how to paint them i didn't notice are there instrument decals on here no there are not there are no instruments so basically you've got to paint all this or get aftermarket um if you want to see this being built if you go to plastic monkey that's the name of this channel Paul is going to be doing a build of this very shortly, I believe, unless he's changed his mind. I believe he was going to do a build of this kit, so uh, this actual kit. So it'll be nice to see, and he's got aftermarket for it as well. So the seats are going together. Looks like we've got moulded on seat belts. Um, we've got all the colour codes callouts here. The colour callouts are all in Mr. Hobby. 
so 33 is matte black um, 317 is going to be some sort of grey but uh, yeah just um, you know you can cross reference them because over here you can see you've got the colour call outs and they have the FS numbers there as well the colours so good to see a lot of people do their interior of their cockpits black in helicopters and I've always said it's not correct. They're usually like a very dark grey or, or a medium grey. Something like XF53 uh, would, would do you. So um, here we go, adding the instrument panel, adding a bulkhead, rear bulkhead into the actual floor. Looks like a fairly simple construction there. And then we've got some windows going in. We've got some drilling, drilling of some holes to be done. We've got something going in the side there. Engine exhaust, obviously no engine detail. This being a fairly old kit now. Uh, but you can get resin engines for it if you want to do a display with the en engines open and everything. So we're adding in the main pivot there for the uh, main rotor, putting the interior in, closing the fuselage halves up, and then adding the top there, adding some more detail around the fuselage there, engine intakes going in, and then we've got the belly going on here. So you've got different bits and pieces there, so you've got different options for your belly on what you're going to put in there. I think you've got some flare shoots and stuff in there. And then adding the belly into the fuselage, starting on your undercarriage, working on your um, undercarriage there. This is going to be for your main gear. You're going to make two of them. They're going in the sponsons on the sides. And then we've got this MAD magnetic anomaly, magnetic anomaly detector. Easy for you to say. Uh, going in there, you've got all the different kind of call outs on there. And then we've got an anti-submarine torpedo going in here after we've got our... Um, marine marker launchers and everything going into our sponsors with our undercarriage and everything so that's all nice and then we got our uh, our submarine torpedo going in there we've got the tail wheel going in torpedo on the other side and then we're going to build up these little spot these supports here for the sponsons we've got some little greeblies going on here intakes and then we've got some more bits and pieces this is the winch housing and we've got the tail rotor assembly going here there's no detail for it to actually have the tail folded, but I do believe, I think Black Dog, or is it Res Kit, does a set for it. So keep your eyes open for that one. I'm sure with this kit being re-released, there's going to be lots more coming out for it. You can also get all the DJ parking stuff for it as well, which is nice. We've got some photo etch grills going on the back there. And then we're going to fit our main clear part here. We've got the upper section there going in we've got different options for what that's for what's going to go in there and then we're going to build up our rotor assembly which is beautiful and a really nice touch on this kit is you also get to build folded rotors as well so no aftermarket required for that you can just do it out of the box so you can build it all with the folded rotors giving you a lovely nice display not sure if in reality the sea king would have had supports on the back or if it just all supported itself but uh, that's something you look at in your references and also here another nice touch you can build up the rotor head and drop it in so when it comes to display if you don't have a lot of room you can take the rotor head out lean against the wall on the shelf put the sea king on the shelf and you've got a shelf that wide is big enough to uh, to store the model on so that's really nice so we've got our options here for paints paints and decals so we've got option number one which is Wyverns, HS12 US Navy. So that's nice. So it's on USS Midway. And then here we've got the Black Knights HS4. So this is on USS Coral Vincent, CVW15. And that's there. And then this one here is Eight Ballers, um, HS8 US Navy. And that's USS Independence, CVW14. And I'm assuming, yeah, this is all grey. Yeah, 307, 303. So that's going to be all grey, which is white and grey. So um, depending on what you want to do, 338, what colour is that? Is that like an orange underside? 338, no, it's light grey, so there's nothing really bright about that one, but this one's, these two have got some uh, different colours going on. And then on the back here, we've got some hints and tips about decals, uh, how to prepare etch metal parts, and basically telling you not to um, go swallowing it, eating it, don't put it on your dinner, and uh, it's not suitable as an evening meal. So here we have the bag of parts, so let's have a look in here. And see what we've got um, as I say you have to bear in mind this is a new release but it is a fairly old kit so we have to keep that in mind so I'll put these screws over here so moving on over here we've got the feels a little bit oily we've got the main fuselage or body house whatever you want to call it and uh, a little bit of scratching on there which is strange because there was nothing on there but uh, 
anyway uh, we have recessed detail which is very very fine and we have recessed rivet detail which is also very fine you can see on there if I just bring the light up to improve the lighting for you you should be able to see on there all that lovely detail which is very very nice indeed it's a big old bird this you can see there um, we're looking at uh, what is it uh, nearly 300 millimeters without the tail and then when we actually add the tail in which is here um, the sprues are all caught up with each other what's going on it's such a shame it's all shoved in a bag together but uh, yeah when we add the tail on there we got What's that 300 about 350 millimeters that's without the rotors on so it's a big old model it's going to make a lovely impressive piece in your display um no real interior detail we do have some ejector pin marks in there which we're probably going to have to get rid of we've also got a window there which you can cut out should you wish so uh yeah obviously different options of this available as well um bit of a sinkage going on there i'm not sure what quote that is going on there but there's a there's definitely a mark in it but, um, not to worry it's nothing to to fuss about so yeah very very nice indeed lovely you can see the panel detail up on the top here well there is some raised rivet detail up there i can feel in that paneling it's uh, very very nice indeed lovely um here's the sprue i just showed you this is all a bit weird the way this is done uh, obviously done like this for different uh, different versions and they've got a separate tool that they add in so we've got the um i'm guessing that's the stabilizer there we've got the rear rotor with the tail rotor we've got some uh, that's that um magnetic thing there this is going to be the underside winch we've got the winch pod there it all feels quite oily to be honest it needs a wash as you can see it's very shiny that's one of the uh, engine pods there so yeah all very nice you see close up some detail there like I say, we have to remember, guys, this kit is nearly 20 years old, so we have to be a little bit forgiving with looking at the the current status of things as we see today. It's another weird sprue, a very strange shape. Uh, so we've got some rotor detail there. That's that wedge part that goes in between the intakes. Instrument panel there, instrument panel and the centre console, all a little bit soft. I think some aftermarket's required for that. As I say, I no doubt the aftermarket are going to jump all over this as soon as it's re-released, which is imminent. I don't quite know where these came from. There were three on Amazon, and as I say, we bought all three of them, and they've then gone now. So I don't know what's going on. We have rotor blades there with a pre pre sagging them, which is nice. That's lovely to see. We have our wheels here. We have some flare shoots and stuff. We've got our submarine torpedoes there cockpit seats again you can see there we've got the cockpit seat with the molded in harness and everything as i say we've got to give this an easy time because it is you know 20 odd years old so what 20 years old almost 90 years old isn't it if it is 2004 maybe even older but um here we go so yeah all very nicely done no flash nice little kit really um and then we've got a mirror of that sprue there. It's not a mirror of it. It's the same thing uh, there. So that's all nice. And then our final grey sprue here. We've got the, the cockpit there. The main cargo floor. Obviously no detail. Lots to be added in there. The DJ parking set gives you lots of interior detail to add. Which is uh, a nice touch. And apparently that is about to be re-released as well. So that'll be a nice to see. And then we've got those shelving or steps or whatever. We've got some main rotor details there and we've got our belly here you can see again we have raised and recessed detail on there which is very nicely done so uh all in all we've got our exhaust there a bit of cleanup required inside um and then do some seam work but uh, other than that i mean it's uh, it's typical of a kit of its age really isn't it and then we have here, we have the clear parts. I will get these out because I got a feeling, I saw, I noticed some funny stuff going on. I've also got a very blunt blade by the look of it. So let's get these parts out. I'm sure I saw I had some, no, it must have been the bag. 
I could have sworn on that clear canopy I had some very very wonky moulding but it actually looks okay to be honest. Um, looking at my hand in behind there it all looks pretty good. Nice clear doors there, nice clear panels, lots and lots of bits and pieces of greeblies. So uh, yeah I think it would probably benefit from a dip or a bit of a polish. It's a little bit on the dull side but like I say you've got to remember this is old technology now. You know, things have come so far in the last few years with kit manufacturing. And then we got some photo etch there, we got some mesh grills and bits and pieces. You can see there. So, uh, it's very thin as well, very thin. So, all in all, as I say, it's not a bad little kit really. Um, no flash on it. It's, uh, it's very, very nice. So, there we go. As I say, if you want to see a build, I think Plastic Monkey, Paul, over at uh, Plastic Monkey, is going to be building this imminently. Um, he asked the question, would you like to see me do this or the um, Tempest? And I think the votes were out of this world for this rather than the Tempest. So um, he'll be doing a build of it. I won't be. Certainly not yet. I've got the Sky Crane I'm on. And uh, if, you, if you haven't seen the Sky Crane, there we go. We've got, we're on the engines and stuff now. I'm just doing part nine. So it's all coming together and uh, yeah, stay tuned, enjoy, have fun, stay safe and, um, and I'll see you soon for another review or part nine of the Sky Crane or whatever's coming next. Bye for now guys.